Hello and welcome back to Monroe Live. Today I'm being joined by Antonio Deneno. He is a senior engineer here. He's our battery expert in-house. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Rivian R1T battery tray um, and the battery modules inside. So we're going to start off taking a look at just the tray itself right now. Uh, we have removed the cover. We'll be popping that off here in just a second for you guys. But they have a steel cover that they're using. Um, we were actually expecting this to be a composite cover from the images that Rivian had published early on in their, um, in their design phase. It did show a composite cover. Something happened along the line and they had to switch over to steel. We're not sure if this is a uh, thermal event mitigation thing or if there was something going on uh, with the stresses that go through the cover of the battery case, but they had to switch over in any event. And you can see on this cover, they have a lot of pieces that have been welded onto it. Um, we have started some analysis on this. We'll show you the other side as well, but there are about 300 spot welds on this. So there's a lot of places where they are putting in some brackets for fastening. Um, this battery tray was fastened through the body in white. You can see a couple of spots here that have some, um, some threads in it. So there were bolts through the body in white to this part of the battery tray. This does not go all the way into the structure of the battery tray. It's only into the cover. And then on through these holes that you can see here and here, the battery cover was bolted down to the battery tray. So they're transferring those, the forces to hold up the battery tray in the center into the frame here. So they, they were carrying some force in this cover that's steel. Um, there's not not a whole lot to say negative about the cover itself. It looks like it was stamped really well, assembled really well, um, but it's, it is a steel cover. Was hoping for something composite uh, as that's what we were expecting to get. We'll go ahead and Antonio will help me pull this off and we are gonna go ahead and go this way with it. All right, and as we get in into this, you'll see there is a a large mica sheet. This is a this large sheet's three kilograms uh, and they've got maybe another half kilogram piece here and for those of you that watched the Tesla Model S plaid battery tray they were also using mica but they were using about 15 kilograms total. So there's a lot less mica in this battery tray than what Rivian or excuse me there's a lot less mica in this battery tray than what Tesla was using. Uh, and these are the only two that we have seen so far that have mica in them that we have torn down one so, of the go ahead one of the uh, interesting things is even though they have um, a large cover they the mic is a thermal and electrical insulator but they still have large pockets of cells that are uncovered so these cells are upside down in the event of a thermal runaway the cells will pop upwards and there's not really anything shielding it in certain locations so, yep. so we're going to go ahead and pull this cover off now. We'll start taking a look at, at the modules themselves. All right. And as you can see, they are using modules in here. They are very large modules. There are nine modules here. Um, they are double stacked with cells. And then you can see the eight that are exposed. There is another module that is underneath uh, this mica sheet here in the front. And in this corner space, they've been able to put in their positive and negative DC fuse contactors. So they're really optimizing and maximizing the packaging space that's available. There's not a lot of wasted space anywhere. You do see a little bit of a gap running down the sides in between the modules and the wall of the battery pack. Uh, but that's something that we're, we're used to seeing in forced side impacts to prevent anything from penetrating into the battery pack or the battery module itself. They also have the battery management uh, controller right here. So that's also packaged in here. It's, everything is really close, really tightly packed, efficiently uh, put into, into place. And Antonio is going to go ahead and tell you guys a little bit more about the modules themselves. All right. So the modules are potted uh, with a, looks like a polyurethane. It's a squishy, but not sl slippery. So which would indicate silicone. It looks like it's a top down pour uh, with a expansion into the urethane as it cures. There's also a uh, BMB strip here for monitoring the actual voltages and temperature of the board. 
and it runs underneath, it connects to another connector like this guy over here. Now with that, uh, the polyurethane foam, we are, we're sure that it is a thermal insulator as well. Uh, we have taken a little bit off and burned it. We're gonna go outside after we get done talking in here and we'll light, try and light some of it on fire with a, well, with a torch. And we've also got some of what Tesla uses just so you can see what the difference is between um, what Rivian's doing to encase their cells versus what Tesla had done to, uh, to put, make their modules. Yeah, we'll do this one first. All right, so here we are outside. We have a couple of pieces of the polyurethane foam uh, that we were looking at that's inside of the Rivian R1T battery packs inside the modules. And this is a self-extinguishing foam. So you can see it, it is charring, it is catching on fire, but then it goes right out. It is charring, it does have the flame right on it. It gets hot, but it will put itself right out as soon as the heat source is removed. And we do have a couple of pieces from the this is the, from the Tesla Model S Plaid battery pack, and what is used in it. You can see that the flame will continue to burn. This is some of the, uh, the blue foam that is around the Tesla Model Y battery pack. So if we bring this out and we do the same test where we put the heat source to this, and stop, you'll see that it keeps burning in the corners. It is a little windy out today, so the wind is helping to extinguish it, but it is burning on its own. So this is not a self-extinguishing uh, foam. This is something that, you, that wouldn't help prevent any thermal events if they were to happen. All right, we're back inside with some of the, more of the Tesla foam that we had tried to burn outside. Uh, it was a little windy outside. You couldn't really see what was going on. But if we bring it in, just, not a real hot source to start with, just a layer. It'll show that this will burn and it just lets itself keep burning. Uh, so this does not, does not quickly self-extinguish. A little bit more, more flame to it. And as you can see, it will just continue to, to burn. All right. Um, also want to take a closer look at these laser welds on here. Um, it looks like they're still dialing in their system because some of them have burned through. Um, let's find a couple good ones. I think this one might be our best one, but there's a little bit too much power going through. So it's shooting through the aluminum and the base of the aluminum connector. So that can be cleaned up a little bit in our system. Um, the BMB strip running down the center holds all the electronics. Um, it's pretty uh, efficiently packed, which I'm kind of impressed with. And the uh, little BMB boards are in, um, underneath this as well. The one thing that I did find a little annoying is they have this one wire going along the outside, which this might be the most efficient way to pack it, but it could have also just run underneath this as well to save a couple cents on fasteners. Yep, we'll start talking about the vents here up front. So you can see on the front, there are four vents that are here. Uh, they're packaged in sets of two. There's another three sets on the back of the vehicle. So they have a injection molding that they've made that they then fasten in with three screws. So they have five injection moldings, um, which brings them to 15 screws. This is something that very easily could have been designed as a snap-in feature to eliminate those screws and the fastening operation that's brought in. Um, there's probably some machining in there as well to tap those holes to be able to do this. So it would make it a lot more efficient just to have it be a snap-in process. And then going from there and looking at the, some of the rest of the housing uh, for the battery tray, they are using an aluminum extrusion that is going around the entire perimeter. There are four extrusions one down each side and then one in the front and one in the rear. They have two different extrusion profiles. The two sides are the same profile and then the front and the back appear to be the same profile as well. 
you can see right here how they've machined out some of the uh, extrusion. So you can see it's a very thick walled extrusion um, to be able to, to offer some support. But this is a very narrow extrusion overall. We've been looking at a lot of unibody vehicles, so they have to build a lot more structure into their battery pack. The Rivian being a body on frame, they get a lot of structure and protection for the battery pack from the frame of the vehicle. So they have this aluminum extrusion frame around the outside. And on the bottom of this is a carbon fiber plate that has been fastened on. Um, we haven't been able to get to it real close yet, but it is a carbon fiber plate on the bottom. And then like we said, it is a steel top cover. The steel top cover, there's about, uh, there are about 80 fasteners holding the steel top cover in place. So you can see some of the holes that are still here. These fasteners, or these holes appeared to be drilled and tapped in the machine shop. So that's a lot of work that's going on to get these rails ready to go. Um, if you remember from back looking at the Volkswagen ID4, they use flow drill screws, so they're able to uh, skip that step in the machining process. They're able to have the screw create the hole and the threads for them as they were putting it in. And if we move over to the side a little bit, you'll see that there's a couple of castings. They're mirrored castings on the left hand and right hand side for a lot of their high voltage connections. They are not the same casting, um, so they had to set up two different tools as a startup um, with, you know, some the investment of creating the vehicle and all of the tools, it would have been something that we would have expected to see the same part used on both sides with just a little bit of modification that could have been done in this vehicle. But they have these castings that they're using to make all of their connections. You can see the high voltage connections down at the bottom. They are all, all of the connectors are screwed in to that casting. And if you look up from the bottom, you'll see very similar to what the Maki -E had when we looked at it, but there are different fasteners for each one of those connectors to be held in place. And it's getting the same kind of uh, connector variance on the other side as well. Um, overall with the construction, this is a very rigid body. They have these uh, steel cross or aluminum extrusion cross members which are all welded in place. Um, but these could have easily been um, composites based on the structure, the rigidity, rigidity of the structure overall. So that could be a little bit of um, weight that's saved and a little bit of simplicity. Um, another interesting feature is they have um, this nice little safety feature here. So this is a high voltage, and be careful here. This uh, silicone stopper, this silicone stopper is blocking their very neat little technology which is a slide over safety clip. It's a couple cents saved but it blocked their uh, good engineering. And in looking at this aluminum frame that's going around the outside there is a lot of RTV everywhere in these seams. They do have a, a plate that's covering up their joint here and you can see there's RTV running up and down. RTV running around the outside of everything. As we get to the back of the tray there is even more of it at this corner. Uh, it's really just, they gobbed it on there trying to make sure that it is watertight. They should have enough welds here to prevent any leak paths, but they're making sure by just, like I said, they're, they're putting it on there, they're gobbing it on there. This isn't a surface that a customer would normally see, and it doesn't look, uh, it, it, it shows that way as well. It is very messy. All right, well, thank you for joining us today as we took a uh, first look at the Rivian R1T battery pack. Sorry, Sandy couldn't join us today. He is over in the Netherlands on travel for business. He'll be there for about the next two weeks, so he'll be back with us before you know it. Um, and I've been asked to uh, request that you guys subscribe if you haven't. And also, we now have a LinkedIn account. So if you are on LinkedIn, if you could go over there and follow us as well, we'd appreciate it. Um, and we'll be back shortly with some more videos on the Rivian. Thank you.